Hasbro, the toy company, just bought Death Row Records. I learned this in People Magazine while waiting online with my son. <laughs> Will Mr. Potato Head come with a bulletproof vest because he has enough missing organs already? How did the CEO of Hasbro spin this acquisition to his board of directors? Cabbage Patch Kids need an urban brand refresh? Less elitist conjuring than Michelle Obama's kombucha liquid lunches? Hasbro, the toy company, just bought Death Row Records after buying Mattel, which makes Barbie. The Tupac doll comes topless because your daughter will undress him in two seconds flat anyway. Today, Suge Knight declares from prison, Poetic justice is served, bitch! Hasbro makes G.I. Joe action figures. But Suge Knight isn't an American hero. He's a convicted crip who would make Cobra Commander fold his laundry after making him his gimpy bitch in the slammer. I'm not joking. Hasbro, the toy company, just bought Death Row Records. It ain't nothing but a hostile takeover of Snoop's Paddington Cornrows looking for an urban refresh line of my little pony got booty dolls. Hasbro really bought Death Row Records after merging with Mattel. The new CEO of Hasbro is a closeted Trumpian. His mission statement for the company is F the PC police. He offered Kanye West a new job position created out of thin air titled Creative Play Officer. Can I get a holla for nonstop gold gemry? And the best is yet to come, holla! Now that Hasbro is in bed with Death Row Records, will Old English pay for product placement ads in Barbie the Rap Video Hostar for Netflix? I still can't believe Hasbro just bought Death Row Records. How did the CEO of Hasbro spin this acquisition to his board of directors exactly again? Lincoln Logs are racist. Now we're calling them Obama Logs. Trumpian board member replies, but Obama grew up under a tent village studying the Quran in Kenya. Can I get another holla for Obama bashes? Never getting old, knowing his social security card was issued from the state of Connecticut. I wish I was funny enough to make that up. Holla! Hasbro really bought Death Row Records after merging with Mattel, who makes Barbie. Smart PR move, Hasbro, knowing Snoop Dogg's brain hovers a notch below porn Hood hell. I just learned about uh, one of Snoop Dogg's grandchildren, like dying at like a very young age. So I just want to, I'm not going to say I'm going to make a prayer for like the family, but you know, just from like, I don't have any grandchildren, but that's got to be indescribable pain to experience. And despite the fact that Snoop Dogg has done like videos where our president is being uh, murdered, and uh, in spite of that, uh, I am very sorry for uh, the Snoop Dogg family uh, for your loss. So they're not God. What do I mean by that? Well, this was, I wrote this essay thinking, I'm going to get paid for my essay work because it's been a while since I've gotten paid for my writing. The Good Men Project, we publish a bunch of pieces. They pay me good, it's just not what they do. But it did improve my SEO search ranking, so I'm grateful for it. Thank you very much. 
Now, I am fortunate enough to have the esteemed privilege of showing up on the same page as this so-called humorous jerk-off lawyer from North Carolina on the same page, but I basically dominate it. I still have no idea why he's on the same page with me, but I'll take it. <laughs> Good thing I decided to retake my name, Michael Kornbluth, because I'm documented as Michael Joshua Kornbluth, but there's another Josh Kornbluth, another so-called humorist uh, from uh, San Francisco. And uh, that guy's a total Google hog. I mean, every time I used to Google my name, his uh, uh, neck fat would like fill up uh, the first like 17 pages of Google. <laughs> it's very frustrating. So uh, this is a great quote uh, that I want to share with you. It says, it's by uh, Jules Pfeiffer. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about Jules. But here we go. If you want to get through to somebody, you better be funny. So this is a piece that I sent to Caveller. I've mentioned them before on the podcast. They market themselves as a parenting website through Jewish lens, but they're a bunch of uh, resistor hysterical freaks, and uh, I've lost all respect for them. Although I did, and I mentioned during the last podcast, I learned about Alex Bornstein and her Emmy speech and her grandmother being a Holocaust survivor, so I'm grateful for that, but uh, I don't appreciate them not getting back to me uh, immediately. Uh, based on this piece, I'm going to share with you right now. 31 likes on WordPress, almost immediately. I sent it to the Good Men Project. We'll see if I'm still in good standing with them after writing a couple of books and for them paying me nothing and for them taking down my piece, Disorder in the Dollhouse. Over Christmas, without a heads up, despite the Good Men Project, does I'll be getting a notification from one of the high-ranking editors there saying, I don't know what side you're on. If you don't know what side I'm on, let me make this very clear, okay? I am on the side of truth and goodness. And I am on the side of piercing bullshit for comedic effect. And... I'm not going to talk about, and especially when you have a news media completely aligned with Hollywood that is intense on pushing a duly elected president out of the office because Hillary Hammertime Kankles lost, and he's exposed all these individuals in Hollywood and the media for the pea-brained Paper thin sensitive, non impressive, non hilarious douchebags that they are when they all decide to form together in this like unified front, projecting themselves to be the smarter, funnier, more giving, more noble intentioned ones which is obviously fake news to the empty gray. But this is my podcast, so no offense. <laughs> the president, with all due respect, <laughs> can go F himself as far as him disrupting the flow to my podcast. Mr. President, I love you, but can you get back to me on my book that I sent you? It's got my signature. Um, I know you were busy with the, the, the Black uh, Leader Summit in, in D.C. I think that's a beautiful thing. I love the fact that uh, unemployment is at all-time low for African Americans. I think everything you've done for them, the speech when you got inaugurated, turn around the urban cities, and that is all great. But can we please designate Antifa as a terrorist organization and uh, withdraw funding from sanctuary cities? Because I think that would be a step in the right direction. And I don't understand why we need uh, House Democratic approval in order to make that plan into a concrete reality. I'm going to sing some Bob right now. Concrete jungle where the living is hardest. Especially when encouraged lawlessness becomes law of the land in sanctuary cities. Holla! So I'm going to share this essay with you right now. It's got a conversational flow because I possess that miraculous ability.
Here we go. They're not God. Inspired by my daughter. Inspired by my daughter. I'm getting too excitable. I'm talking too fast. Why is raising my children Jewish important to me? Knowing I just learned at 43 years old, three kids later, how the mezuzah necklace my father has worn since his dad died when he was only 23 from radiation emissions during the big one during World War II contains the verses from Deuteronomy commanding the Jewish people to hang a mezuzah on our doorposts and love God with all our soul instead of new rules on real time with Bill Maher. Let's start with my time at a conservative synagogue for the high holidays. I'm not a member of to make peace with my uh, anger issues uh, with God. Now, just, just to clarify, I'm not talking about my anger, my anger issues uh, directed towards God, but like my anger issues on a personal level, as far as me being, you know, quick to lash out. You know, after doing all this research, uh, as far as getting familiar with all the commandments. This one commandment is like etched in my soul right now, which is to not unleash uh, the wrath on your wife. I think the exact quote is, I love your wives and don't be harsh with them. (laughs) Obviously, easier said than done. But here we go. Especially when they threaten to divorce you because you decide to fuck at the Spotify while listening to your uh, American rock and roll uh, mix while heading back from Cold Spring. (laughs) So, back to my time at synagogue. So, this is what impacted me the most, folks. The English translated passage, which is a nice benefit, like when you go to synagogue, you have these like rabbinical interpretations of like the Hebrew text. So, and, and that's what's great about the Old Testament. Like, you know, God wants us to argue and philosophize and ask questions. So I think it's great. So the English uh, translated passage that impacted me the most was how my spiritual rearing of my children, uh, which I think, uh, which is the path that I've set forth so far, that appeals to me the most and that they describe in the Old Testament as a indestructible type faith is like this. It's a, a mixture of faith amassed from proactive individual study and personal inventory of your own like internal probing experience combined with the faith which is commanded to learn in the form of your memorized Haftorah portion <laughs> uh, by your Jewish dad from Palm Place <laughs> whose father was the president of a synagogue in the Bronx long before the New Yankee Stadium was built, otherwise known as the house that gentrification built. <laughs> and is this rock solid, unbeatable, Road Warriors tag team combo of God commanded Jewish dad pusher man faith combined with the gratitude inflected, soul rebel infused, introspective path from within? I'd like to set my three children on. Without my constant hammering of you better obey or I'll suffer the rage of God, next time you think it's funny to hit daddy in the nuts idolize Miley Cyrus, or kick your sister's private parts in the bubble. Now, raising my kids Jewish was important to me even before I learned how my mother-in-law force-fed uh, my kids' Eucharist at her Ukrainian church behind my back during Ukrainian Christmas, which is never kosher, not even in Bill Maher's book, despite him not believing in God at all, thinking it's all just meaningless fake news, pageantry bullshit in the first place. Just to clarify, for clueless Jews, who didn't intermarry into a family with the Ukrainian mother-in-law, who writes God bless in every cart imaginable, even the one for the Biden family, who live in the same neighborhood in Delaware, despite knowing their son Hunter had sexual relations with their dead son's ex-wife. But I digress. Yeah, so Eucharist also means communion, which is where you kneel down to eat the wafer, acknowledging as the body of Christ, ensuring your entry into Christian-defined heaven as some sort of a loophole, if Your Jewish blood-containing children from dad's side were never baptized out of the womb. Come to think of it, being baptized is really the antithesis to the love supreme faith package I described before, combining personal belief and faith pushed upon you from Hebrew school. 
Because according to the Christian faith, without a baptism, without a baptism, you can't get into heaven. Case closed. But wouldn't God, regardless of whether you accept Jesus as the Son of God or not, prefer you come to love the totality of the Almighty after you developed some life experience under your belt, experienced some trials and tribulations, or been blessed to be in the delivery room for not one, but all three of your unplanned bundles of sunshine? Knowing a baby out of the womb starts up pure with no surging sexual appetites to drive them insane in the membrane yet? Raising my kids Jewish is important to me because I do believe in the power of prayer. Because I've only acknowledged a Jewish God in my life forever, and he's always come through for me when I needed him the most. One summer, after my first big-time request of God in the form of a potential summer romance, he gave me my summer wind Katie on the Cape, making this 20-year-old version at the time a very happy man by teaching how happy I was capable of making another. My three children only reinforced that mantra every day, especially my youngest, Baby Samuel, a.k.a. Chosen Curls, was bound to, woo! Funnier dad, happier baby, baby. Vince Vaughn, I'm waiting for you to get back to me as well. Get to it. I don't recall you being super busy last time I checked. Also, after my wife was in labor forever with my first kid, Matilda, a.k.a. Grace in Motion, I prayed for God to ensure my knock-kneed putts embedded DNA skipped the generation. Now my daughter is breaking high jump records at school at eight years old and conducting parent-teacher gymnastics school update conferences with her do-it-all daddy over here regarding progress reports and involving her two adoring younger brothers in training on her hardcore future Olympian gymnast in training supervision. I also had cousins on my father's side who were killed in the Holocaust for the crime of being Jewish. For that reason alone, I feel compelled to raise my kids Jewish, knowing my children are able to live out dreams they never could. Raising my kids Jewish is important to me because my funny Jew bone is a tremendous source of pride for me, which all three of my kids inherited. And no Nazi or hate speech police monitor at Facebook or on Twitter and beyond could ever take that away from me. Last. I tell my daughter, who's already had her mikvah, her ritual bath conversion ceremony already, how I felt ostracized from the rabbi on the bima, it's like the stage at synagogue, during Rosh Hashanah services, uh, when I attended for back-to-back days during Rosh Hashanah last week, explaining how I, the female's rabbi, how her passive-aggressive acknowledgement of my presence there, without my wife and kids, stems from a past like preliminary conversation about getting a mikvah conversion ceremony for my hospital circumcised sons since she became aware of the fact of how my wife had no plans of converting to Judaism ever. <laughs> my mom converting and no longer attending synagogue after she converted from my dad didn't help the case of my wife converting if I chose to push the issue. <laughs> Nor does my mom not acknowledging or replying to a beautiful picture of me lighting a Shabbat candle from this past Friday night with her third gorgeous grandchild basking in its glorious orange beamish glow. Still, I never asked my wife to convert, stating, you don't want to convert? Fine, but I want to raise the kids Jewish. My girlfriend, now wife at the time, replies, but we have to raise the kids on a pescatarian diet. Fish, veggies, and cheese. I say, Jesus the fisherman was the original super Jew sold. Still, it was impossible to not feel a look of shame descend upon me from the rabbi on back-to-back days of services for Rosh Hashanah. Like I was some unwanted, resurgent, herpes sore on the spot blissfully unaware of almost the entire 614 commandments such as at the time such as seeking out consulting services of fortune tellers in LA only to learn my chakras were more clogged than my freshman one-header also learning the other big no-no in Deuteronomy 
is for Jews not to marry Gentiles. The logic behind this Jewish law is the fear of non-Israelite women turning your Jewish blood-infused kids' hearts to their Gentile God and prophets. I'm not freaking out over this prospect yet, knowing my daughter's initial reaction to stained glass window displays at the Met in Manhattan was pretty data, but too churchy. <laughs> also, my daughter stating, who do these rabbis think they are? Defining who's more deserving of God's love than the other. They're not God, Dada. God could use more hardcore spiritual warriors like my daughter on his side. This is the Do It All Dad Year podcast. Dad friendly entertainment for you and me. Controlling our kids with comedy can make our kids great again. Shana Tova, it's Happy Jewish New Year, and I'll talk to you guys soon.